Hi, I'm Derek Miller, the president and CEO of the Salt Lake Chamber and chair of the Utah Economic Response Task Force. And this is the Task Force 10, where we spend 10 insightful minutes with business, community, and government leaders talking about what they're doing to adapt, to innovate, and to overcome in the midst of this coronavirus crisis. And today we are joined by the Chief Communications Officer of the Larry H. Miller Group of Companies, Amanda Covington. Amanda, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and just a wonderful opportunity to work with you as we go through this economic recovery planning. You know, the Larry H. Miller Group of Companies it's called a group of companies because there are many companies, uh, all of which are impacted in some way by COVID-19. Uh, probably nothing more important than your employees at this time, as well as your customers. Tell us what the Larry H. Miller Group of Companies is doing for both its employees and its customers. Well, I appreciate that question and you're correct. Our associates are top of mind every day and and as are our customers and those who are coming into some of our facilities that do remain open. We began working on COVID uh, weeks ago and preparing ourselves for how we would treat our customer facing businesses as well as with our employees. Where we are today, those who can work from home are, uh, and it's a small subset who are actually in a dealership and maybe a couple who have to be in the office to take deliveries or other things. So we have done uh, everything from following the guidelines of CDC from sanitization to the cleaning and, and all of the protective measures that an employee uh, must take with, with their customers. In our dealerships, before we were ever mandated in certain states and also under some of the directives here in Utah to stay at home and stay safe, we began implementing a number of measures. So our service department stopped serving food and beverage. We distance each of those customers, you know, six feet apart or more. We limit the amount of people who are in the store. We actually have technology and solutions that sanitize vehicles once they've been serviced. So once Derek Miller takes his car to the shop and goes to leave with it, it's clean inside. And then as we realized we had a lot of essential workers on the front lines or people who may be vulnerable and not want to come into a service department, uh, we, off we began offering complimentary concierge service. So we'll actually go and pick up that vehicle, service the vehicle, sanitize it, and then take it back. The Larry H. Miller Group of Companies, in addition to owning a lot of car dealerships, also owns the Megaplex Theaters. We're going into the warm spring months. We're going into the summer blockbuster season. All those individuals, families, and households are itching to be able to see their favorite movie that they've been watch that they've been looking forward to for a long time. What can you tell these customers? You know, one thing I'd like to say is we have some of the best customers in the entire world. They're very big fans of the Megaplex theaters and that whole experience. And, and as we had to shut down our theaters, which was sad for all of us, including our associates, we had a lot of patrons saying, bring us uh, at least the movie theater popcorn. And so we have innovatively set up curbside and delivery service where you can order on the app, it's cashless, and you can drive up to your favorite Megaplex theater or order it at home and, and have your own in-night uh, popcorn treats. And of course, we all know about the Utah Jazz. We were sad to see uh, the season um, have to go on hiatus, but we're hopeful for the future. Tell us, tell us, give us some hope. What can we be hopeful about? You know, we all are very hopeful, both the Utah Jazz and last week we actually had the opening season uh, begin for the Bees, which obviously we couldn't take part in. And so uh, the, we're working very closely with the leagues and management uh, to find out what kinds of seasons we can have, even if it might be a shortened NBA season um, for the Utah Jazz. In the meantime, our players are at home working out and, and staying strong and fit. We're also communicating with our season ticket holders and our corporate partners to make sure that when we do have that opportunity to ramp back up and create opportunities for people to come together again, that we do so safely and we do it responsibly. Responsibly. So we're all keeping our fingers crossed that we will see some sort of season for the NBA and uh, we'll get some rescheduling going for the Salt Lake Bees. In mentioning the Bees, I saw a fun video last week. Uh, the governor, uh, Governor Herbert and Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall, uh, I think were slated to do some uh, opening pitches. Instead, they did a virtual opening pitch. Tell us about that. That was really fun. I, I would like to give a shout out to our policymakers and uh, decision makers here in Utah. They've been very supportive of us and the partnership's been great because we can actually use these opportunities to communicate safe messages. But the governor, all decked out in his bees jersey, did a ceremonial pitch in the governor's office and Mayor Mendenhall dressed in her bees colors 
tellers. Their pitch last week was to stay home, stay safe, and stay six feet apart. Uh, one day, those pitches will be with actual baseballs and across home plate. Although in the video, it looked like the governor may have actually been throwing a real baseball there in the ceremonial office. He did what I wanted to see was the camera pan and, <laughs> and see who caught that ball, but, but we were left guessing. I was wondering too who caught that ball. Not, not all people would know that the governor was a pitcher on his high school baseball team. So he probably had a lot of fun with that. And uh, what a, a great example, even in a lighthearted way to adapt, to innovate and overcome. Now, in a more serious way, uh, many of the event staff, people working at the movie theaters, the jazz games and other uh, capacities for the Larry H. Miller group of companies, part-time employees who have been impacted. We always like to remind ourselves on the work of this economic task force that what we're really working for is people. Tell us about the people of the Larry H. Miller group of companies. Well, they really are the lifeblood of what we do. They are those who our customers interact with. They elevate that guest experience and we need them more than um, they will even ever know. And so this has been a very hard time for our employees. And I would like to thank Rudy Gobert for his generous donation to uh, those arena workers and Gail Miller and the family for their uh, more than generous match of Rudy's donation. That money was deployed immediately to our employees. We also have been working in an innovative approach with Department of Workforce Services and some other big companies here in town who have immediate hiring needs. So the minute we knew that some of these workers weren't having events to show up for and clock into, we began talking with John Pierpont at Department of Workforce Services as well as Smith's and um, 1-800-CONTACTS and Amazon, finding ways that we could quickly move those populations into an immediate job. And it's been a tremendous partnership across the board. And I know that our employees and their family members have appreciated that as well. One of the other things that I love about the Larry H. Miller group of companies is how involved its employees are in the community. And the community is something that, that your founder, uh, Larry Miller, believed uh, strongly in and true to his legacy uh, that continues today. The current CEO, uh, Steve Starks, is a former chair of the Salt Lake Chamber. He's currently on the Economic Response Task Force. Uh, you are helping in our industry outreach group, and I'm sure there are many, many other examples of your employees who are engaged. Tell us about that work and why community prosperity is so important to your organization. We appreciate what the governor's office and what the chamber are doing and the leadership that you're showing. And thank you for the opportunity to have a seat at the table and to share our industry experiences and thoughts. It's very important that as a community, we're all coming together and sharing our best ideas because collectively we will get through this and emerge much stronger. It's been fun to see the innovation that's happened and the, the generosity. Donovan Mitchell helped to provide me for school kids in Granite School District. We have two jazz players, both George Nying and uh, Joe and Renee Ingalls, who are doing podcasts and sharing information. The Jazz Bear implemented a reading challenge and he's doing a drive-by um, kind of scavenger hunt uh, to check in on kids and see what they have posted in their windows. We have a lot of um, jazz players and trainers who have published training videos and ways for kids to get their bodies moving and to stay healthy over this time. Larry H. Miller used to say, uh, go about doing good until there's too much good in the world. That's one of the guiding principles at Larry H. Miller Group of Companies. And we are so fortunate to see contributions as large as jazz players providing meals in the Granite School District to employees who are making masks for employees and people in our community. Whether it's a small act of service or something much more grand, we're happy to be able to have a role in stewardship and service in our communities. I like to tell people that uh, putting uh, the economy back online, dialing it up is just a matter of when, not if. We know we will get through this pandemic. We know that we'll be back. And I think for me on a personal note, I'll know when we've hit that mark, when we're all together again, cheering on the Utah Jazz. So thank you, Amanda, for joining us today. And thanks to all of those employees in the Larry H. Miller Group of Companies for what you're doing to support our economy and support our community. Thank you. And thanks for all you're doing, Derek. I want to thank all those who have joined us on this Task Force 10. I'm Derek Miller with the Economic Response Task Force. I've been joined today by uh, with Amanda. Amanda Covington, who is the Chief Communications Officer with the Larry H. Miller Group of Companies. 